Right, so welcome to an episode that uh, a lot of people have asked for and I did want to do it and then because <laughs> it was such a tough time and uh, it drained me both financially and emotionally and mentally uh, I didn't want to make the video but I feel it's important to speak about what happened and to explain exactly what I went through and just so you guys know perhaps why last year I didn't upload on YouTube as much and um, that yeah what happened was was pretty serious now I want you to know that it might seem like I'm blaming other people for my mistakes that is not the case I take full responsibility for the fact that I did we did drive the Land Cruiser into the water and I did take it to this fella to get it fixed and uh, those are my decisions and I live with the consequences however the way that myself and quite a few other customers were treated by this fella and what he did to us was a complete scam an absolute scam a money-making racket and uh, this is why I wanted to explain and and what better way to explain than being here on the Chobe River at Ihaha campsite more than a year after the actual event took place at First Bridge in the Moremi Game Reserve. It happened in July 2022 it's now August 2023 and you can see behind me that's actually the 200 series. This is its next big trip after everything that happened and uh, I thought I'd film this because coming up in the next few episodes the 200 series will be featured the video is up on YouTube where everything went wrong and contrary to a lot of public opinion especially some guys that think they know it all I did not drive the car in there to deliberately get stuck and for filming like I explained I did that crossing with Ryan three months earlier no issues and uh, it was a judgment call it was the wrong one but those that that's what happened we went in and the vehicle went down and the water wasn't deep there's another thing I have to explain the water wasn't deep when the vehicle actually submerged the water was below the running boards of the vehicle then in that soft sand the vehicle started to sink and uh, it sunk very 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 quickly and eventually the water line was up to just below the snorkel and yeah it was stuck in there for an hour and a half i tried to winch out but i didn't have a solid enough anchor point then the the winch actually shorted out which was another fitment issue not the winch's fault but yeah it was an absolute disaster really uh, while i was in the crossing in an attempt to to rescue the vehicle i was turning the steering wheel left and right all these warning lights came up on the dash my a lot of the stuff was on the floor passports money electronics ipads cameras so i lost quite a bit of that and uh yeah it was a traumatic experience i'm not gonna lie why would i drive it into that thing on purpose to get stuck i've had the vehicle for seven years why would i all of a sudden do that those of you that actually know me and that means something to me um you know it's easy for the public eye to just say this guy doesn't take care of his stuff believe me those of you that know me know how well i look after my vehicles and all my kit the story actually doesn't start with the the 200 the story starts with the 100 series um, i just started the build and this fella that i took it to came highly recommended on the 4x4 community forum and on um, instagram he had some really good stuff you could see that he knew what he was doing and the first time i took the 100 series there it was evident he knew exactly what he was doing his knowledge on the 100 series was absolutely exceptional he found so many problems on one day and i was just blown away and my biggest problem i've learned my lesson but my biggest problem is i trust people too much I trust people way too much so yeah i left the vehicle there and i didn't have all the budget in the world to get it back to new condition he gave me a list of stuff it was going to cost around 347,000 rand to get it back to showroom condition pretty much I did not have that I had 20,000 Rand to spend on it so I gave him a list of stuff to do for 20,000 Rand 
it wasn't a lot of stuff. Paid him the money, boom, quiet. Never heard from him. Again, two months. Phoned, messaged, found another number, emailed, did not hear from him. Completely disappeared off the planet now with my 100 series there. And I was actually supposed to take that 100 series on that Botswana trip that July. And I actually went to his property and stood outside on the roof rack looking for what it, I hoped would to be my car. On the inside, couldn't see anything. So anyways, yeah, I thought my 100 series was gone. He would not reply. I reached out to some other people that had taken their cars there previously. Same issue. He then, uh, while, uh, while I was in Botswana, he sent me a message, sorry Ed, I dropped my phone in a tractor harvester or gearbox oil, it was some useless excuse. Um, but anyway, as I was back in contact. So then I drowned the car. So I went there with a the 200 to pick up the 100 and um, he did a good job the first time around on the 100. I definitely felt a difference. Uh, but there were a few things that didn't add up. Um, for starters, the car never battled to start in its life. And now it was battling to start. I'd now already left the 200 there. And all I asked him to do on the 200 series was to take the carpets out, let it dry, and fix the warning lights that were on the dashboard. That's it. Didn't tell him to strip it. Just remove the carpets so it could dry out. I did a bit of research, and that's what you do when you drown the car. Anyways, so two days later, I see he starts stripping it, and I'm like, hey, just take it easy there. I didn't give permission. Um, the agreement we came to was 40,000 Rand to do the repairs, which was quite a lot of money. I had to sell my rooftop tent for that, and I paid him. Similar story, gone. As soon as he got the money, didn't answer, didn't speak to me, nothing, for about a month. Um, and you guys are asking, oh, well, why did you take it there? I was under the impression, after having that first bad experience, that taking it, taking it to Toyota, they don't have the time and stuff to take the carpets out and let it dry. Like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of work. Um, I was wrong. They can do that. And take it to Toyota. If that ever happens to you, do not take it to, I'm not going to say all aftermarket mechanics, but yeah, anyways. And then he gives me a call, says, Ed, you need to come in. Uh, said okay so I come in there and the 200 is stripped but if I tell you stuff that has zero to do with water damage I mean he's the whole dashboard is out um, the whole interior is out all the wires everything is out computers the works air box uh, intercooler for what reasons I have no idea but then it became clear to me he's gonna strong arm me for money once he's got your car stripped that's his modus operandi he has your car stripped and then he keeps asking for money. He says, Yana, this is gonna, this is gonna cost you money. And I said, I don't have the money. We came to an agreement, 40,000 Rand. Anyways, he says, okay, no, 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 I'll fix it for 40,000 Rand. Two months went by, I constantly followed up with him. He sent me this thing, this is working now, this is working, speakers are working. The, the actual only damage from the water crossing, which was evident was the speakers weren't working the warning lights on the dashboard and there was water in the fuel tank which we sorted out in Maun at Ngami Toyota. Those were the only issues. Everything else was working. He's now telling me the car went into limp mode. Nonsense. I towed the trailer out of third bridge all the way home. No issues. No limp mode. That car's never gone into limp mode. He's making up all these excuses and I started losing my patience. Anyways, and subsequent to this, I'd ordered parts and paid for parts for my 100 series for the Namibia trip at him already. So I wasn't going to go to Toyota because I'd already bought the parts, supposedly bought the parts. I'd already paid him. Anyways, just before the, the trip, I get there with the 100 for four days. Like I explained before the Namibia video, he did nothing. And I didn't see any of the parts that I paid for. But now you're so desperate to get your car out of there because it's just stripped and everything. Anyway, I went there with Ryan from 4x4 Ventures. And uh, this guy started getting violent with us because I said, listen here. I'm leaving in four days time. You need to do this. I've paid you. This is now three months that you've been messing me around. And I'm telling you now, you need to do this. And he says 
yeah, I know, you know how I work. Starts talking to Ryan. Says, Ryan, you know, I get guys in here and I strip their cars. And then I hold them like a puppy because I've got them. And he starts doing this in front of Ryan. Eh? He says, I've got them like a little puppy and I just make them pay. And I had to get out of there very quickly because I was really pissed off. Um, and then I just wanted to get the 100 series out. So we got the 100 series out with a bunch of problems and uh, left the 200 there. I thought I'd never see that car again. I sent him a message while I was in Namibia saying, how's it? Um, you know, this vehicle needs to be ready by the 21st of October or the 15th of October, sorry. And uh, that's the insurance company will come and fetch it on a flatbed with all the parts or they'll fetch it assembled. It's up to you to do that per our original agreement. Anyways, because I was now in Namibia, he obviously did nothing. And then I had to, I was in Namibia, so I had to get my dad to go and sit there and coordinate with him exactly how I had to do with the 100 series and sit there and watch him assemble it for three days. And again, pay more money, more money. And all these things that he said he had fixed before, uh, when I got back from Namibia, this is the video I took five minutes after I got home. Right, so I've just gotten into the 200. Okay. ABS is still on. Pre-crash safety. Still there. Let's see if I put cruise control on. Cruise control. Malfunction still there. Are the speakers working? No, they're not. They're not working. Yeah, the automatic windscreen wipers is not working. I also see he didn't wire up the bumper. Um, I also see you now it hasn't come back with these parts here. It hasn't come back. It hasn't come back with my compressor either, which he said is broken, which it's not because I used it in um, in in Mound after the crossing. So he's taken the compressor. That's what he's done. Um, I see he's returned it without my pinch weld and this is still very 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 loose he actually hasn't even he hasn't even mounted it there he's also taken the pinch weld out of the front bumper off the front bumper and has not put it back and yeah, it's a big job. You have to take the bumper off to do that. So he's taken the bumper off for what reason? I don't know. He also took the spotlights off for what reason? I don't know. This has nothing to do. He took the winch out. I didn't tell him to do anything with the winch. He returned the winch like this in just a box. <laughs> yeah, just in pieces really. Um, didn't ask him to touch the front end of the car, so I don't know why all of this was removed. Um, uh, like I said, windscreen wipers are now not working. And uh, yeah, this is how he returns the car to you. This is a dent. This dent. This dent was here before. This dent was here before. It's, this is a new dent. That dent was not there before. So he returns your car like that. Let's see if he's put this side back. No, he hasn't either. He hasn't either. Yeah, so he's fixed. The only thing that I can see that he's fixed is the VGRS warning. Um, yeah, the VGRS is the only warning light I've seen that he's fixed, so. Uh, yeah, and it's come back. More problems than it went in. So he stripped it, washed it for a hell of a lot of money. Returned it with a windscreen wiper issue. Um, 
yeah this is just i haven't driven it yet this is just what i can see here so yeah he didn't fix any of it the warning lights were still there the speakers weren't working most of the interior parts were now damaged because he throws them on the ground there and his dogs and cats run all over them and they're full of dust so the screens were scratched the the um, metal work inside the car was scratched the leather was damaged there was a lot of damage but i'm just so relieved to have the car back little did i know he also didn't fit a whole lot of the parts back to it like the automatic module for the rear air conditioner the automatic module for the windscreen wipers my compressor that was in there he returned my winch to me broken and cut up and yeah he didn't fix anything anyways now it's a complete disaster but at least i've got the car back because i thought i'd never get it back there's a lot of um, bodywork damage as well to the outside a lot of dents and the interior the roof lining was all smudged with grease it was just an absolute disaster but anyways so i then took it to toyota and fortunately i had addressed my insurance company hollard through my insurance broker seller brokers thank you to seller brokers and hollard you guys were exceptional and understanding throughout the whole event i had already lodged the claim with them after the vehicle did go down in the water crossing they do cover for that under the 4x4 insurance policy uh, anyways it went to toyota now this is the damage from the water crossing right so i've got the invoice here from toyota um, obviously they are charging labor and they are charging to replace the parts this is purely what was damaged in the water crossing not what the fella damaged afterwards in the water crossing there was an airbag ecu that i had to replace i had to replace the radio amplifier it's the amp that's located underneath the passenger seat. That's why the speakers weren't working. Speakers are fine. Then the driver's seat switches. Now, they were working. They are actually working. They were just a bit sticky. So we replaced that. Not very expensive. Okay, this is the amplifier. So that airbag ECU was 1,720 Rand. The amplifier was... Uh, amplifier assembly 5823 rand then the switches for the driver's seat were 1290 rand then there was also a headlamp that was cracked that the insurance paid out for that is 17000 rand headlamps are not cheap um the warning lights all those warning lights on the dashboard see the the 200 series has got it's you know it's quite sophisticated in terms of its computer if one thing goes then it sort of you know shuts everything down so if your engine light goes on then the cruise control doesn't you know the automatic cruise control the pre-crash safety all those lights come on if one thing sort of goes wrong what actually happened was it was a calibration of the steering computer that is it I literally saw the guy, Henko, who I always trust with my car there, five minutes. He had to recalibrate that steering computer, ECU, and all those warning lights are gone. The pre-crash safety, the VGRS, the automatic cruise control, the ABS, the traction control, all those lights on the dash that you saw is just a steering calibration. Not 100 ECUs that are now blown, which is what the fella told me. He told me the damage would be 650,000 Rand and they'd write the car off. And you know, I trust people too much. So I thought, eesh, this is bad, eh? But yeah, it's, it's just add those amounts together that I've told you and that is it. That is the damage from the water crossing. Pretty crazy, really. I think the car did really well. And like I said earlier, he didn't fix any of the stuff. So yeah, this is all water crossing related damage. So it came to that amount, um, which is not bad. Considering the car was in there for an hour and a half, it is amazing. It's amazing. 200 series, an amazing car. And now we get to the parts that I had to buy from Toyota and import from Japan because this fella didn't put them back in. And if I tell you, he's a violent, unstable person. And he threatened me with physical harm if I came after him after this whole thing that's why i'm not mentioning his name to be completely honest with you if you guys go far enough back you can figure out in the videos who it is 
Um, and four people after me that are now good mates of mine had the same situation. And I actually spoke to them and just said, let's get your car out of there. It's as simple as that. You've got to get your car out of there. And whatever you do, do not take your car there. It'll be the worst mistake of your life. I'm not arguing with the fact that back in the day when he had a proper workshop and he was doing authentic, proper business, that he was good. But on a 200 series, he knows nothing about a 200 series. It's all book knowledge. With the 100s and the 80s, I'm sure he's got, because he's worked on them. 200 series, I'm sure I know more about a 200 series and I don't know much. I mean, he fixed nothing. And he told me all these ECUs were gone. Nonsense. He said he had to resolder them and I think he did nothing. Absolutely nothing. And this guy is so toxic. I've actually seen him do this. He's got quite a bit of Toyota parts in his workshop, new ones. What he does is he shows you your old part is broken. He takes a photo or a video of him putting the new part in and then sends that to you. What he then does is take that new part out, clean your old part or some other guy's old part with a sanding machine, put it in there and he says he's got a new part and you've paid him for a new part but it's not it's a faulty old part that's just been cleaned that looks like a new part I've seen him do that I spent a lot of time in his workshop um, so yeah I'm telling you you cannot trust him I've seen him do it so yeah anyways um, I got the 200 series fixed at Toyota the insurance paid out but then the total cost and what I have to spend afterwards from damage that he did. So this is reconditioning the interior parts, reconditioning the leather, putting those automatic modules back in, moving the starter battery back to where it was because he'd moved it for some other reason and run tiny little cable. How that car didn't short out blows my mind. He had damage to the roof rack. I had to replace all that stuff. The damage from him was 123,000 Rand. So yes, another thing I'd like to add is um, along with the automatic modules that I had to replace, he also damaged two of the airbags. Now that is very, very expensive. So the airbag light was on for quite a while. Uh, that was around 40,000 Rand. That is included in that figure that I told you earlier that I had to pay Toyota to get everything sorted. On the 200. Now, maybe I won't do a separate video on the 100. I'll talk about it now. So he did the same thing with the 100, he took some other guy's parts and put it in, like the diesel pump and injectors, because mine were perfect, then all of a sudden they were faulty. The intake shutter valve, mine was fine, then all of a sudden I get it back from him, throws the engine warning light, it's finished, so I have to get a new one. The steering rack, he fitted the wrong tie rod ends. Um, this is just stuff that I know of now, I'm hoping that everything is sorted, but on the 100 series, I had to spend another 148,000 Rand above what I'd already paid him at Toyota to get it sorted and um, yeah it absolutely broke me financially and mentally I'm I'm not afraid to admit that and it's it's sad it's sad uh, I thought that's the end of the channel uh, and what do I do now with the vehicles do I sell them no I can't replace them with anything you know so yeah I think I'm happy. Thank you to Ravonia Toyota, everything you've done. I've now used the 200 series on this 12 day adventure, sorry, 14 day adventure. No problems. The 100 series I've done for a couple of trips now, used for a couple of trips. No problem. So thank you to Ravonia Toyota for the amazing work you've done on the cars. I now have the confidence back, but it's always in the back of your mind, you know, will it come back to bite me in the bum? because you actually don't know what he's done to your car. He has it there for such a length of time. You have no idea what he's done to it to sabotage it. And he does do that. Trust me, I've experienced it. So yeah, that's the story of the 200 and the 100 in some way. Um, and this is why, you know, the, it's been tough. It's been tough. I'm not going to lie. I'm happily and openly admitting that. And... Um, yeah, this means that there won't be as many adventures as there have been in the past. It just financially is not possible to continue the way I used to. I'll still do the best that I can. I'm very grateful to my Patreons that keep this channel going. And uh, yeah, we'll try and recover, achieve what we used to achieve in getting out five or six times a year to these amazing places. It'll just take time, but I'm not giving up. But this is an explanation of what happened to the the 200 
and the 100 but the 200 is here behind me so i'm not one of those people that just changes their cars nothing against people that do that but when i bought these cars it was a long-term investment and uh, they do last a long time if you look after them so yeah it's an unfortunate unfortunate situation that happened and it's not only to me it's to at least four or five other people that i know of and uh yeah be very careful who you take your car to be very careful i'll urge you just to take it to toyota and you, if you, you don't trust your toyota i've been using ravonia toyota for a long time and i'm very happy with them you know at least you have recourse on parts and you know they're fitting you know you, you got a warranty on parts you get a proper authentic invoice so yeah um you guys might ask why did i not take the cars to ravonia to do all this stuff that i took it to him for i just didn't think they would take the time to go through the car and stuff and yeah it could cost a little bit more but i promise you you're actually saving a lot of money in the long run doing it through this fella i've lost so much money and it's not done properly so i urge you to take it to toyota um, if you don't trust your toyota like i said Ravonia Toyota has been very, very, very good on my vehicles and they develop a relationship with your vehicle. They know each time, okay, no, last service, we didn't do this, so let's do this. Let's look at the, look, have a look at this. And they understand what we put the vehicles through. And I urge you, take it to Toyota. Or if you've got a Ford, take it to Ford. Or if you've got a Land Rover, take it to Land Rover. It's just, I promise you, I'm not saying all mechanics are like this by any means. I'm sure there's some great ones out there, but it burnt me really it burned me and put almost put my business out to be completely honest but i think we are at a point where we're okay now and we'll just have to recuperate financially and hope that we can be back on track and out here again in two amazing vehicles that i absolutely love and the whole river crossing thing i really have to thank a lot of people i have to thank the people that came to our aid because one vehicle wasn't enough to pull the 200 out so the other vehicle that came uh, and we could daisy chain to thank you so much to you legends we wouldn't have gotten out if it wasn't for you to wild dog 4x4 to jacques thank you for your amazing recovery equipment every time i use it i'm blown away and we also wouldn't have gotten out of that situation if it wasn't for your awesome recovery equipment to ngami toyota maun thank you for taking the time in going through the vehicle and making sure we'd get home safely to my insurance company hollard through the seller broker thank you you know you guys have been nothing but you know absolutely amazing people to me yeah to all the other people that send messages and send support throughout the whole thing appreciate you guys and uh yeah just be very careful but that's the story of the 200 and the 100 but it is back and it is ready to take on many overlanding adventures in the future and uh yeah the next one is where my mate Jono and i head out to Botswana for an epic two-week adventure.